Welcome back to another video on the lifted MX-5. Today I'm going to be working on the car and I'm going to be fixing that positive camera up the front for the final last time. Hopefully, I have tried to fix it before by replacing the alignment bolts. Um, they were completely shot and it did fix it a fair bit as it was dreadful before and it was undrivable. You would actually hear the tires kind of screech as you go along and the alignment was really off as well. Um, so I put them in, it fixed it a little bit, but it, it like when you lift these MX-5s, it is a known thing. You either have to get extended lower ball joints or adjustable upper control arms, I think they're called. Um, so you can adjust the camber by adjusting these. So these are hard race adjustable camber arms for the Mazda MX-5 Mark 1. The paint on these is lovely. They all come with the same sort of blue paint, all the hard race stuff. I think they have a black line of stuff coming out now as well. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm going to install these today. So the wheel off and this is the old upper control arm that's coming off. Um, it's the big bolt here that has to come out but it's usually a bitch to get out just because of all the shit in the way here. I think it slips out over that and then kind of out the front. So I'm going to take off this and the bolt at the back obviously has to come out and I think there's a bolt under this. I've only after realizing that that is the way it goes on, not this way around. So it's probably set for positive camber rather than like as much negative camber as possible, which is what I need, I believe. Um, it, this is fairly rusty, so it probably is a good idea that it's coming out. Um, and you can see it's under a lot of stress. So I would imagine it's going to be fairly hard to get back into this position that it's in right now. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is just take out the long bolt and try to get this bolt out underneath. And then we'll see how we go from there. The long bolt is now out. So you can see the whole upper control arm came down. Um, I had to use a jack here just to kind of put pressure to lift it up to take the pressure off the upper control arm. There was a lot of stress on it. So once I had the bolt out, it wasn't moving whatsoever. This one here, oh, that's gooey. I took off the little bolt at the end, but it's still stuck, it won't come out. So what I'm gonna do is, I just realized, I forgot that there was this kind of backing part here. So really the um, strut would have to come out either at the top or the bottom but that is a bitch to get out. As you can see, it's like, because it has a lift kit in it, it's on so much strain, it's like held in place at the moment. So I don't want to touch that. So I'm just going to cut here at the back, here and here, cut that out and then it should slip off. And once it kind of comes up a bit further, I'll have another go at getting this out. The bolt is out, but it's just not coming out. And um, so I would imagine it's wedged in there nice and tight. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just cut out those two and then try to pull out the whole thing. So for about the last half an hour, I've tried to get the ball joint here. Um, it's an absolute bitch to get out. I didn't realize they're sorry to get out. And there's actually tools you can pick up for removing these. I didn't realize how kind of wedged in there they get. So for a while, I was thinking about how I was going to get it out. I didn't want to go by the tool. So I grabbed a scissors jack, I think it is called, I had in the, in the shed there, put my uh, impact wrench on it, and I just went like that as hard as I could at it a couple of times. And then literally a few seconds ago, it just shot out up in the air and landed here beside me. Uh, so it definitely saved getting the tool. Um, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it if I had the upper control arm there. I was lucky that I was able to cut it off. But yeah, that worked handy enough. So the front camber arm is now in place. It looks like there is barely any clearance and there is, no, is barely any clearance, but it is not touching. But that is because there is no weight on the front wheel of the car. I have it jacked up underneath. Um, I have it set as much to negative camber as it can, I believe. There was no kind of see-through part there, but underneath it looks like those silver blocks could go back a tiny bit further. But you can see, even with no weight on it, it's fairly level, fairly straight. Um, with more weight on it, I would imagine we'll get a little bit of negative camber. So uh, hopefully this works and I don't have to buy extended lower ball joints. So I'm gonna throw the wheel back on the car, I'm gonna lower it down, and hopefully that positive camera up the front is completely gone now. And then I'll do the same to the other side. Finally, no more positive camera up front. After fitting the adjustable camera arms up front, I lowered it down a second ago and it, the positive camera was still there. It looked the exact same as the opposite side. It looked exactly like that. Lots of positive camber. Took the wheel back off, tried to adjust even more, put it as much negative camber as I could. I did, but it didn't seem to change much when I put it back down. Still looked the exact same. So I pushed it forward, pushed it back, just hoping that it would all kind of slip into place. And it looks absolutely perfect now. Thank God. 
it's probably it, there's probably the tiniest bit of negative camber um but it's it's fairly it's fairly uh, straight or near zero degrees or whatever that is the old side so you can see how bad it was before the alignment's off this wheel's facing in the other one's facing straight but yeah you can see how bad that is the rear kind of has negative camber but that doesn't really bother me it looks fine and it doesn't it's not like it's doing crazy off-roading where i need it to be like bang on so i'm gonna go ahead do the second side now hopefully i should be able to do it faster since i know how to use my uh, scissors jack to pop out the ball joint and i know how, what i have to cut and what i have to take out so i'm gonna do the other side and then i'll show you the end results okay so it is now two days later I've spent a fuck ton of time trying to get that uh, ball joint, I think it's called, out. And in the end, I had to borrow one of these ball joint splitters to get it out. I was gonna buy one at Halfords, but I presumed it would just disintegrate trying to get that out as it was so stuck. Tried the jacking method like I did the other side. And in the end, I ended up borrowing this off a mechanic. It's a decent one and it worked well. The thing shot out about five, six feet. Um, I'm lucky my face wasn't in the way or it'd be in pieces. But anyway, that is out now. And I fitted in the second upper control arm, fixing the positive camber on this side too. As you can see, it looks pretty well. Same with this side of the wheel turned at the moment. So that is the positive camber completely sorted on the MX-5 now. So finally I get a work at actually getting that angle turning so that the wheels don't rub anymore. Um, I wanted to get this done first as I'll know how much I have to beat in on the firewall. Um, as increasing the negative camber is making more of the wheel kind of come on the inside as turning when I'm turning left and right. Um, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is beating in the firewall as much as I can and fixing the rust that's in all the arches. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing in the next video and after that I have a nice little body kit up there to fit on the MX-5. Um, so yeah, I'll probably need some spacers then after that. And as well as that, there's the roll bar and all that, which will be coming in the next few days or weeks for use as these videos will be going up every Friday. Um, so that's it for this video. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.